So a lot's been going on the past few weeks and I haven't really been updating the website with a lot of different details. So I'm going to take you through an overview of everything that's happened in the past few weeks. So uh, something that just happened in the past couple of days is we uh, built our forms um, for our uh, footing uh, concrete pours. Anytime you do a structural concrete pour, you need steel rebar inside of it to reinforce it. So what you're looking at here is a steel rebar cage with stirrups every 16 inches on center that we created to put into our main footing. So you can see here, all this, all this woodwork and then this foam going along the front face of this footing here are our concrete forms. Um, they are poured up to subfloor level which is uh, a few inches higher than our actual like ground level here right now. Eventually that is going to be all even subfloor and then we're gonna we're gonna build off that for our finished floors. You can also see over there um, the footings for our buttresses. We poured those a few days ago um, to get ready for this big pour that you see we just did here. After any concrete pour, we always take a stick or a piece of rebar and poke the concrete to remove any voids or air pockets that may be trapped under the surface of the concrete. After that, we use a site level to make sure that our concrete footing has been poured to the level of subfloor. So those columns over there are called buttresses, and uh, we had to build those forms out of uh, three-quarter inch OSB and two-by-fours for the most part and they are braced up the wazoo because when we poured the concrete today, we actually didn't have quite all that bracing in there, but um, when we first started pouring, you can see over here, we had like some minor blowouts. We had some, some coming around there. We saw right here we had a little bit of a blowout. We had a bulge occur on, on this side of the, uh, of the form. So we had to add some extra bracing like this and this and the ones on the other sides to uh, to fully brace it. So right now, these are filled with concrete. We filled these all the way up, and they're holding really good. Uh, so when we take these off, these are going to serve as uh, these uh, concrete columns that uh, that will help hold. They tie into that bond beam up there, which I'll explain in a minute, and they just help hold that tire wall back and secure the entire structure. Um, so. Up on top, you can see our bond beam. That's something we did about two weeks ago. Uh, that is a simple can wall. In a previous video, I, would, I described how to create uh, the, uh, how to mix the concrete for the can wall. Um, and that's what it was used for. So what that actually is, is a form. It's two walls on each side of the tire wall. And that got filled with concrete. And we'll go up there in a minute and take a look at that. So here you can see, Here's our two, two can walls, one can wall here, one can wall here, and this is our concrete pour that we just did today. We had a uh, cement truck and a big boom um, with a pump, pump this in. We've got pictures of that, which uh, I'll show you right now as I'm speaking. Um, these right here are anchor bolts. Uh, these will serve to, when we put our plating on top of this, I got one, uh, two by six Trex. Trex is a, a uh, plastic, some kind of plastic composite like material that uh, takes the place of wood and it never rots. So we want to use it in places where that it's going to be exposed to humidity and any kind of moisture so we never get, we don't have to worry about it ever rotting out. So we use it strategically. So th these anchor bolts right here, we're going to put our treks, two plates, two pieces of two by six, on, one on top of the other to make our plating up along the entire bond beam. And over here we can see the tops of our uh, of our buttresses. You see that they're filled up all the way to the top here. Also, you can see our uh, our cisterns. Our two cisterns are uh, mostly buried right now, and you can see I put on these extensions. There's uh, three. There's an 18-inch extension and two more 18 extensions over there on that cistern. Over here, we got a 12 inch extension. And the reason for all this is because cisterns need to be buried 18 inches under the ground uh, to prevent them from freezing over. As you can see, I got a little bit of this uh, rigid foam insulation just on top and around the tops of the, inter the cisterns that it's gonna be buried as well. <clears throat> and that'll help fend off any kind of freezing that would occur. But 
burying them 18 inches deep up to the top of that uh, extension you see there, uh, that's pretty much good enough. Um, the problem here that I had was that I did not uh, dig the hole out for the cisterns quite deep enough. So when the roof comes down from the, from the house, comes off the back of the house, I need, it's actually gonna, you know, it's gonna be somewhere around here. The gutter's gonna be here and the scupper is gonna come down. The 18 inch extension was too high for the, for the rainwater to come off the roof onto the scupper. So I had to get, to lower this a little bit to, uh, to allow the water to, to run off the roof. Yeah, so next steps uh, we got going on here, we're gonna do that plating, we're gonna do the, the framing on that first uh, footing that you saw down there. We're gonna frame out the window boxes and the door boxes. And then next week, uh, today's Friday, next week, we're actually on Tuesday, we're gonna have a crane out here and get the Vigas up on the roof and start doing the decking. And by the end of next week, we should have the roof pretty much completely done and we should be catching rainwater into our cisterns.